Lenore Look, a Chinese-American woman who's wanted to be an author of children's books since she was a small girl. Born and raised in Seattle, young Lenore began to make picture books in kindergarten. Her parents could not afford the beautiful books her teacher read to the student. Publishing was no problem in those days, not like it is now. By the first grade, she was her own publisher, making multiple copies a day by hand. As for fame and fortune, she took care of that too. She taught her brothers and the neighborhood kids how to wait in line and wait for autographed copies. And she sold them for 25 cents each. She also accepted candy. As a child, Charlotte's Web was her favorite book. She would read it over and over again. She still rereads it today, about once a year. She says it is an intensely beautiful and heartbreaking story. Charlotte was and still is her heroine, and she has always as aspired to be like her, just as Charlotte des is described in the last lines of the book. She was in a class by herself. It is not often that someone comes along who is a true friend and a good writer. Charlotte was both. Lenore set her childhood sights high. Lenore was an ambitious dreamer who constantly changed her mind about her future. By third grade, she had abandoned the literary scene. Her parents had bought an old piano and signed her up for lessons, and thus she began, began dreaming of becoming a world-famous concert pianist. Then she came across a book on Maria Talshif and became a ballerina, just like that. She would leap and pirouette all day without stopping. It was a lot easier than becoming a pianist. Then she read a book about a surgeon, and one about a veterinarian, and another about a great tennis player, and she quickly found herself wanting to become whatever she had last read, and her parents always supported her. Eventually, she grew up and became a news reporter. It was the perfect job for her. She got paid to do what she loves, writing and being curious. Working as a reporter, taught her how to talk to people, how to find the story behind the story, and how to tell a story in a way that keeps a reader reading. She learned to listen to the way people talk. She learned to be precise and concise in her own words. Best of all, the more she wrote, the more she was filled with a sense of wonder. She loved writing, not only about what happens to people, but also about what happens inside of them, which is what writing for children is all about, but she didn't know it yet. It wasn't until she became a mother and began reading children's books again that she felt what the Chinese call Yun Wen, a continuing of work begun in past lives. She had long forgotten her early interest in creating picture books, the thread she dropped in kindergarten. It had been nearly 30 years before she picked up this beloved hobby again. Then, one afternoon, with her two young children clamoring for something to do, she showed them how to fold a paper into a book. Picked up some crayons and a pen, and she found herself exploring the imagination that she had as a six-year-old. Today, Lenore Look writes multicultural children's chapter books and picture books about the Chinese heritage and young Chinese American children navigating the path of biculturalism. She's authored and illustrated the Alvin Ho series, the Ruby Lou series, and multiple picture books including The Brush of Gods, Henry's First Moon Birthday, Uncle Peter's Amazing Chinese Wedding, Polka Dot Penguin Pottery, and Love as Strong as Ginger, among more. Each of these stories teaches children of Chinese descent and of other cultures about the Chinese heritage. Lenora says that her childhood influences her writing tremendously and is why she's decided to write about her own culture. She grew up listening to stories that her dad would tell her about growing up in China and about Chinese historical figures and events that really sparked his imagination. She says that he knew the cold, hard facts, but the way he told them to her and her siblings always sounded like a first-hand account. For example, she knew for a fact 
that her dad had suffered the cold winters and brutal beatings as a forced laborer in the construction of the Great Wall. Also, he was practically scared to death as a sculptor in the creepy tomb of the Terracotta Army. In happier times, he witnessed the invention of the kite, ice cream, and fireworks. Only as an adult did she realize that her father's gift of storytelling was why she knew so much about her own heritage. She also inherited his convincing and brilliant storytelling talents. Among her books, the Alvin Ho series is the most popular. It is about a Chinese American boy named Alvin who is scared of practically everything from bugs to elevators. In school, he is mute and has a social performance anxiety disorder. But at home, he is a very loud superhero named Firecracker Man. He is also the brother to Calvin and a gentleman in training so he can be just like his father. Being quiet in school causes him issues with the boys, so the girls always stand up for him, which makes it even worse for him with the boys in his class. The Alvin Ho series is all about the perils of being a child, and how about being a boy is all about survival. Another endearing story written by Lenore Look is called Love is Strong as Ginger, and the main character is a young girl named Katie who loves to play Barbies with her grandmother as her grandmother, named Jinjin, loves to teach her how to make dumplings. Jinjin works at a crabbery, and day in, day out, Katie begs to go to work with her. On the day Katie finally gets to go to work with her, she realizes it's not exactly what she had imagined. Jinjin works all day long, swinging a heavy mallet to crack the crabs in a noisy, smelly room, and still barely makes enough money to come home on the bus. But regardless of her hard day, Jinjin comes home each night to make Katie a fantastic meal. Katie realizes that her grandmother sacrifices a lot for her to give her a bright future. Another story written by Lenore Look is a cheery story about Chinese wedding traditions, Uncle Peter's amazing Chinese wedding. Jenny's favorite uncle, Peter, is getting married and everyone is happy. Everyone except Jenny. While everyone in her family is running around getting ready for the traditional Chinese wedding, preparing for a tea ceremony, exchanging good luck money, and helping the bride with her many dresses, Jenny is crying on the inside. How is she supposed to be Uncle Peter's number one girl with her new Aunt Stella around? Maybe if she can stop the day's events from happening, he won't get married at all. Finally, Jenny learns that her Uncle Peter has enough love to go around for both of her and his new wife. The young Chinese-American Jenny is also featured in Lenore Look's picture book, Henry's First Moon Birthday. Jenny's baby brother, Henry, is having his one-month birthday, his first moon, as it is called in Chinese. And even though Jenny's sure he doesn't deserve it, all Henry does is sleep, eat, and cry, there's a big celebration planned for him. Together, Jenny and her grandmother get everything ready, from dyeing eggs a lucky red color, These are only a few examples of Lenore Look's stories that educate young children of all cultures about the Chinese heritage and traditions. Lenore, a Princeton graduate, now lives in Randolph, New Jersey with her husband and two daughters. And like it was when she was in kindergarten, her own personal bliss is sitting at her desk in her pajamas writing children's books. <laughs>